love about Fela 19. Absolutely fantastic music by iconic Irish artists from the 90s. So a certain vintage will really remember and enjoy. But the new, I think the new uh, listeners of music appreciate all types of music. And I have to credit Dundalk FM. We've got our new 10 year license and we do play at least 30% Irish music. And we do achieve above and beyond that, especially with shows like this. So featuring 100% Irish and I'm very proud to be involved. This is Dundalk FM. You're listening to myself, Tracy Gray, or Tracy Hamby Gray, as I'm better known on Facebook. And I am delighted to be in the presence of one of my dearest friends at this stage, Dave Brown from Picture House. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Very good, yeah. You're very kind to have uh, joined me to have a conversation about the band. Yeah, yeah. Well, things are good, you know. A few gigs, a few good gigs coming up. Between now and Christmas, obviously we have Fela on the on, on the twentieth of uh, September, and then we're doing Lost Lane in Dublin on the thirtieth of November. Back with our own show with our original lineup, so that's exciting. And I always go and support. I love your gigs, you know yeah. I do. And I mean, I had a really special uh, gig in the concert hall, which I really, really enjoyed. That was absolutely stunning. So I mean, you're I love my band. <laughs> you brought me through the nineties. I suppose that is in essence what the trip to tip really is isn't it it's kind of a 90s revival kind yeah of thing. yeah it seems to be all right it's just um it's great to be part of it i mean you know i was at the original failures and um, we didn't play at it now but i was at them and uh, oh, the, at- the atmosphere a, was fantastic you were a gig you were a punter i was a punter yeah yeah now we, back, we, we managed to, to uh blag our way backstage and all that but and we knew a lot of the guys but uh yeah it was a great atmosphere at it you know so i saw do you know what bring me right back to that because i never got an opportunity to go to it because my parents wouldn't let me go Uh, and they really wouldn't let me go there's no way you were heading that far away at this age i don't trust you which was not very nice but anyway they didn't and like you did like what age group were you back at that time or do you want to not mention age (laughs) (laughs) no um well i was uh i would say i was 
What age was I back in then? Probably 19, something like that. Yeah, so 20. you were in this uh, similar age group yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, but sure, like... we, signed a, we signed a record deal when, when I was 19. We, I moved out of home so when So you, I was you were probably a bit more independently, you were ahead of me in that sense. Yeah. Like you were already out there. So you well, didn't have any restraints in that regard. No, but we loved playing in, the, in, in bands. I mean, in our bands, that's what we did. And we played everywhere and, you know, stuffed all the gear into the back of the van and off we went and just played, played, played. We got signed to Polygram in, in, when I was 19 and um, that was a disaster. It was just a very tough record deal because they just, they signed us on the strength of our demos and we kind of knew where we were going. We liked what we were doing and they kind of wanted us to be something else. So they tried to change it into something else and it just... It made things very impossible for the band. Was that typical of record deals yeah, of back course. then? Yeah, that was no better, you know. And what about record deals right now? Are there? Are there? Is there such a thing? I don't I know. There's such either. a thing anymore. Well, here's the thing, you know. I mean, I had this conversation with somebody there recently. I mean, record labels don't have to make product anymore. They don't even have to press a CD. That's true. So a lot of their music is, you know, is. I was looking at. Um, just some stats there. I was over at Pete Glenister, funny enough, who wrote uh, a lot of our songs with on our first two albums. And uh, we were just looking around and seeing what was selling at the moment. But I mean, if you look at Ed Sheeran or Taylor Swift or any of these people, like two and a half billion streams on Spotify for one song. Wow. Two and a half billion streams. But what does it equate to financially? Well, big time, big money for them, yeah. Yeah. So it can be done. And it also, you know, it is easier to get your music to an audience now that normally you wouldn't have had, been able to do. And you would have had a record label to do that. But I still I still think the record labels are making more money now than they ever made because they have no overheads. They don't even have to make the albums anymore because they won't sign you unless you already have a record and a presence on Facebook. So basically and you have to be a fully functioning band absolutely. independently yourself and then, oh, okay, now we'll take you. Yeah, Frank Zappa said it brilliantly in an interview once. He was like, you know, I used to love it when the fat cats on the record labels, guys sitting in leather chairs smoking cigars. Because <laughs> they didn't know what was going to sell and the band would come in and they go, well, I don't know, release it, see what happens. And that's how all of that music kind of came through. And then they kind of figured out, no, we got to get somebody young and hip who knows what the kids want and they can sign the bands. And that's where it all started to go a bit askew because how do you know what people want? You know what I mean? How do you know that? So, you know, it is, there's, there's, there's pros and there's cons definitely, but the, the, the record business as we know it, as we knew it is, is over. It's dead. It's dead. Heard it here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and that's not to dishearten anybody because, like, you can make music in your house now relatively, I mean, once you buy your equipment, it's relatively... Easy enough to do. Yeah, easy enough to do. DIY. Yeah. And then you can release it. You can have it out on um, on Spotify or online before you know it, you know. So you can kind of do all that and then promote it and get... But, you know, at the same time, there's so much information now, isn't there? Oh, I mean, you can get anything dating. from anywhere. Yeah, like, I mean, it's yeah. a bit like me and my nurse job. You know, oh, what do I, I haven't got that information. Oh, I know, Dr. Google. Everything's there. Yeah. yeah. Which is good. And yeah. always not so good if the information is not actually accurate. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah. That could be a of, problem. There's a lot of that going on now, all right. There's a lot of that going on now. Go back to a fella as a punter. Anything stand out? Atmosphere-wise. Oh, wise. yeah. Well, should we, well, yeah, we loved it. We were just drinking cans of beer. And Did you camp? Around. No, actually. I think we, we, we stayed in a hotel down there. We, oh, yeah, we geez, bummed something. I don't, or did we just drive home? I don't know. It's so, so long ago. <laughs> but it was great fun and we enjoyed it. And um, you see, we were signed. So I think we had, you know, we got tickets and that kind okay, of thing. Like, we hadn't got records somehow. out, but yeah, we had, yeah. you know, the record label sorted something out for us or something. And, and we went, as far as I can remember, I, I don't know. Guys. Was there a standout moment at all of going backstage with someone? Or Yeah, well, you see, that was the thing. I was always more enthralled with the atmosphere behind the stage. I still am yeah. to this day. It's weird. If, like, if, Nika, even when we were on very big gigs, support gigs, I'd, I'd much rather be kind of, you know, even in my dressing room and just hearing all that confusion going on in the background, being around the kind of buzz rather than being at the gig. It's funny that you mention that because I, I just ended up doing stage management at a gig accidentally. I might add, I went to doing photography and ended up kind of stage managing at the Liverpool flat. Oh, right. Okay. But like what you're just saying, it was actually really interesting to see everything, you know, from backstage. Yeah. It was a different kind of experience. It is, and yeah. 
liaising with the artists and then moving the stage along and everyone having a great time out the front, yeah. even trying to get photos in between all that. It yeah, really yeah. was kind yeah. of... That was special. To me, that was a special Well, moment. me too. So that's the, the... That would be more so the buzz that I'd be um, after, you know. Are yeah. you going to be staying the whole weekend of this trip to... Dip? No, no. I don't even... I don't even know for... I think we're staying the first night, I think, and then... And then we're off then the next know. day. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you. I'll be bringing my camera. Right on, yeah. Excited. Great, we'll get some shots. Yeah. This one is a little bit different to the, the 90s version of Fela. It's a classical, isn't it? Are you doing a classical version or are you on a different stage? No, we're on, we're on a different stage. I think we're on the, um, the second stage because we're later on on the Friday. Okay, well, so that think, suits me. Yeah, I think we decided to move there because uh, we'd much rather be, uh, you know, a bit later in the day, smaller venue, a bit more. Well, Friday's more a tough one because, like, I mean, I know I'm coming from work. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think I'll make it till around four-ish. Right. You know, right. so for me, that's good. That was a great move. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, look, it was nice to be asked to, to play it, you know, it's good. But, and, and I, I spoke to Pete about this as well. We kind of have to get the message out there that we are back as a live band, so we have to play more often. So, Absolutely. So we do Fairly, we do Lost Lane, and we're going we're gonna to do as many gigs as we can next year. And just... You know, get back out there playing and get some new music out. And, you know, it's just nice. But they're not quiet anyway, too. No, no, you're we've lots of things going on. No, stay I mean, indoors. No, no, we've lots going on. Um, uh, as you know yourself, we we did a writing project for Frankie Swain there recently, which was very. I, I really enjoyed that whole project uh, so far. So good. Well, that's good because that's a change in. You know, that's an extra bow to you as well like yeah well then you know we, we have the the corporate band as well like we have a, a you know a, for want of a better word a, a, you know really good covers band the controversial all-stars we and do. We, we do everything we do and you play it at weddings, weddings. Bad mitzvahs. yeah yeah because when you're a musician you, you just love to be playing yeah and if you're in an original band and you're just dependent on the three or four gigs a year in ireland that you can fill i mean what else would you be doing all the time you know but it's not just Ireland either. There's no, Northern Ireland, there's no, England, there's there, overseas, there's there is, but it's America. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of travelling involved. Now, you know? <laughs> At our age, you see, like there's so many oh, kids. Oh, don't you see no, our But there's age. so many kids and all involved. You know, to get the like, you know, I mean, Jeff has four kids, and and uh, okay, you know, Duncan yes, has yes. a kid, and, and and Johnny has two girls, and and I have my girl. You know, and it's just like. Can we disappear now for four or five months in, yeah, in America? It's yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult. No, no, we'll hang around here and have a bit of crack instead. And then, of course, we play Brussels every Monday night, and as as uh, we have great fun doing that. Look, like, that happens in every other city in the world. People don't realize if you go to New York, you can see some of the best musicians in the world playing in small little clubs because that's what they do. They're musicians; they play all the time. You know. What What kind of music do you like hanging out to? You know what? I'm I'm a song person. I just this, to me the song is king. So anything from Wichita Line Man to you know R Proud Mary, I just love it all because you're not a music snob. No, no, neither all. am I. No, 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 no. I never got into that. I, 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 you know, I just anything to me that I just I think is a well written song. I think it's a well written song. I mean, you know. Even the cheesiest people, what people consider the cheesiest pop songs in the world. Like, I got into trouble with my first record label because I said I wanted to be Brian Adams. What? And they What's wanted me that? to be the fun young cannibals. And I was like, well, they sold four records and Brian Adams sold 65 million records. I think you were right. You know, but, but to them it was all about cool, coolness and haircuts and, you know, which is fine, but it's not if you want to sell records, it's not. You know, you got to be in the mainstream on the radio all the time. That's, so that's why when Picture House came out, we had a new single on the radio every three months. We were a radio band. We want songs on the radio. Yeah. And I got it. Not interested in the cool part, you know. Now, maybe we, we should have had a bit more cool in the band. I don't know. Who knows? But, I mean, the songs did really well. You know, they, the radio did love them and played them a lot. And still do. Still do, yeah. Irish Radio does love you. That's yeah. My favourite song, of course, is Sunburst. You know that. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say to you? So, I had a quick look at the lineup. Yeah. It's changed a little, hasn't it? Hmm. I think they've put in um, Sinead O'Connor now instead of instead of uh, Shane. That was a big surprise. Yeah. Massive surprise addition. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, I was there last year, so I had the pleasure of being at the, the very first. Um, it was very well run, I have to say. There was three areas and I took great enjoyment out of um, 
oh, it's a cider that sponsored this particular area. Anyway, it was a 90s old school disco vibe. Right. And my mom was like, you're supposed to be taking photographs. <laughs> and I'm up on tables dancing. I said, great. It's great crack. No, it was really good. Started it early. And those two stages, the smaller stage and that area was going and there was food in between and all that. So you got to do and see a lot. And then the kind of uh, Irish bands with classical music kicked in. OK. So, yeah. I mean, it, it had a good flow. So I expect the same. I expect similar. Um, EMF. It's a long old time since I heard it. Yeah, what's that? that was they were that, back in the 90s. Was that was the money one, was it? Million, uh, what was it? Yeah. They burnt out, they famously burnt a million pounds or something <laughs> stupid like that. Yeah. Uh, Soldiers of the Ping, Horse Lips, the stunning, stunning, were at it last year. And uh, Jerry Fish was, Jerry Fish was so funny. He ran out, uh, out into the crowd and brought the crowd back on to the pitch. It was meant to be no pitch, so it was a pitch invasion. And Jerry Fish broke the rules. But uh, Jerry well, Fish. Jerry's Jerry Fish, isn't he? Yes, Superstar. Jerry Fish is Jerry Fish. Something happens Monday. I mean, there's there's plenty on that lineup for everybody. But I really am interested in the Thin Lizzy get together. Yeah, you know. Well, that's been going for years, really. You know, and I mean, it's seventy. Uh, Phil would have been seventy this year. Yeah. So it's uh, you know it's, it's probably a bit of a good t- uh, tribute to him. I think there's quite a huge appeal on that lineup for yeah. a lot of people. Of my vintage <laughs> yeah. and the younger, I I notice at a lot of festivals and things like that. I'm very surprised at the younger people loving all the kind of yeah. older generation. Well, they would have grown up with their parents listening to it, wouldn't they? Exactly. That's what it is. And it seems the 90s in particular. Yeah. Like I do a lot of DJing and that yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, the kids know all the 90s. All they school. sure do. Yeah, they sure and they do. they have the crack. Yeah, yeah, well, look, it was well-written music and it lasts. It has stood the test of time. As has the 80s. I mean, let's face it as well. There was that big festival on recently with, the, uh, with all the 80s That did very well, yeah. 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 Did you see the lineup on that? It was I like, know, how was are they affording this yeah. gig? Everybody that was ever famous in the 80s was on it. But do you not think that people are loving going to music and festivals and gigs and Yeah, such I mean, it's like... picked up an awful lot, hasn't it? But no, I mean, no. it was always that way, you know. But Ireland is very spoiled that way too. I mean, there's great bands playing in boozers for nothing in this yeah, country. I know. And the first thing people do when they see a speaker going up is leave, you know. <laughs> or there talk. Is, th- yeah, or talk, yeah. yeah. Which drives me mad. But anyway. It does, yeah. But, you know, there's great, great talent out here. There always was. There's, you know, great vintage. Like, you don't get this in other countries. No, possibly because we're English speaking, firstly. But, you know, it's just, there's always good bands, people playing. I was up in the Blue Light recently. It was a Wednesday night. Oh, just met a couple the of Yeah. And I met a couple of pals up there. And uh, like this band came in with a harp and an inland pipe and a violin, and it was just ridiculously good, you know, sitting up by the fire. And so, where would you get this, you know, for nothing in your pub? Did you go near the Fla? No. In Drada? No. I did. Was it good? At the end, for the uh, after party bit. Okay. But apparently, the, the Monday after it's all happened is the best because all the musicians are still there and they all come together. Yeah. So yeah. we did. We we sampled a bit of that, and it was great crack, and it was lovely. And then the best moment, <laughs> it's terrible to me, was my daughter walking out of the bar. Now at ten o'clock, they had great. They gave us an hour's grace, walking straight into a guy called Colin O'Donoghue, who used to play with a band called The Enemies. I don't know if you've ever mm. crossed The Enemies. No. They were original, but also do weddings, and they're still they're gigging, but without Colin. He is Captain Hook. And once upon a time on Netflix. Right. Oh, right. Okay. So this is a big deal yeah. for a 12 year old. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. And we walk straight into him and I go, hello, Colin. I know you from the enemies, but my daughter knows you from. Yeah. Can she have a photo? It was like, oh, uh, fair play. It was an incredible moment. But like me, like that, had we not gone to that, yeah. that moment would never have happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, look, festivals have always been great and they're much better. I mean, I'm much much better run now than they were years yeah. ago, you know. But do you attend any, like, the social stuff, like, back in the day, or do you just, is it more to No, gig? no, the new going out is staying in. <laughs> staying in oh is the new going God. out. <laughs> oh, this is Dave's moments <laughs> for staying in <laughs> and having a glass of wine. That's it, perfect. <laughs> yeah. I know, I, I mean, I, I mean, really, the, the only gigs we go to would be... Uh, Stuff on in the three or something like that, you know, Fleetwood Mac, Paul McCartney, Paul Simon, stuff like that. Stuff, all the proper, yeah, great 
are classic. I mean Paul Simon did a fantastic gig in the RDS there he was with um, Bonnie Raitt played with him and James Taylor God. you know amazing what's been your pinnacle moment I've probably already asked you on a previous show but really why is your standout moment in there oh I suppose that the, well, the best one was when we, we sold out the Olympia we did two nights in the Olympia but no seats 1800 people per night sold it out it was great and that was that moment where you just went yeah, Thank you. yeah, we were still thinking, <laughs> is anybody going to come, you know? Really? And the lads of were like, it's sold out, we're still telling you. <laughs> like, yeah, that doesn't mean they'll come, you know. Oh, good. But uh, yeah, no, we really enjoyed it. That was great. Great. Well, Dave, thank you so much for our chat. I really enjoyed it. I always do. Yes, essential indeed. And I want everyone to get listening again. Um, yeah. Tell everyone about your socials because you're all up on the social media yeah, stuff well, now. Yeah, well, picturehouse.ie is the main site and then, you know, uh, Picturehouse Band on Facebook and, you know, we are... Um, Twitter and Spotify. Spotify. And all that yeah, it's all there. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, we look forward to your upcoming gigs, which are... Yes, uh, well, as you say, we're playing Fail on the 20th and we are in Lost Lane on the 30th of November. I'm also doing a... a, a by the way, I've started a Peter Gabriel tribute band. Yeah, have not. Uh, so, yeah, I'm starring as Peter. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, now, I'm very intrigued because... 17th of November in Lost Lane. That's interesting because I know I know his door. Oh, do you really? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, great. We'll have to get her over and sing with us then. So we're going to have to connect this. Yeah, this is yeah, very funny. Yeah. Very interesting. So you... So we called the band So. Okay. And uh, we do our first gig on the 17th of November because I just grew up with that music. I just love it. And to get the opportunity to play it live is just fantastic. How did that come about? Just said, let's uh, let's start a Peter Gabriel tribute band. Just like that. Just like that, yeah. So I we're just going to do nice, nice, good, big size gigs that we Lost can do. Lost Lane's a lovely venue, being yeah. in it. Yeah. It's fantastic sound. Yeah. Which is where the old that. Lilies was, in case anybody's wondering, at the end of Grafton Street. Yeah. They're downstairs is now foodery. Yeah. eatery and then upstairs is a venue and it's fantastic I really yeah. enjoyed I went to the launch of Knock and Stock in there okay and it's fantastic so you'll have a fabulous gig maybe I'll go yeah there you go it's more than welcome thank you very much Dave from you're Picture listening House. to Dundalk's local community radio